Welcome, delicious friend. They say that fallen London is a city of a thousand stories, and they'd be right. And I am here to share those stories with you. So sit back, pour yourself a glass of Broken Giant 1844, and enjoy. Ah, excellent, you're here. First off, may I offer my deepest apologies for my prolonged absence, and secondly, allow me to quash the rumours spread about said absence that you may have read in the less reputable publications circulating our fair city. No, I was not engaged in an intimate relationship with the quiet deviless. Our time together has long since passed. No, I was not in exile in the tomb colonies, again. And no, I was not staying at the Royal Bethlehem due to a fit of temporary insanity. My mind is perfectly sound, thank you. I was merely engaged in a month of study at the university. The nature of my studies is a story for another time, however. I had originally planned to tell you of the Z today, Zailing being a passion of mine, but then I realised you were still mostly ignorant of the true power in our fair city. Oh, whilst there will be a mayoral election this year, and whilst the traitor empress and parliament still claim to hold power, the true power in this city since the fall has, and always will be, the masters of the bazaar. A small side note before I introduce you to the Masters themselves, as well as who the Masters are, there is also the question of what they are. For they are not human, far from it, but perhaps they once were. There are some of us who have glimpsed destiny and seen authority given unto us, you see. I wonder what destiny you shall see when the time comes, and if it shall differ from mine. I wonder if you'll survive long enough to learn it, and the true nature of the Masters. Officially, there are foot... 13 Masters of the Bazaar, but you should know now not to believe the official story on most things. Based on my own research, I believe that there are actually 11 Masters, or 9, if one discounts Mr. Sachs and Mr. Chimes. Whilst they came as a group, they are not as unified as the revolutionaries would have you believe. They each have their own schemes and plans, and are united only by a common goal that I will not reveal here, and by their shared hatred of the Second City. For your own sake, do not mention the Second City in their presence. Each one will have a uniquely negative reaction. Mr. Wines, for example, will scowl and give you its worst vintage, and Mr. Iron will write your name, slowly, with its left hand in a special notebook. And now, on to the Masters themselves. First off is Mr. Wines, who was once the Khan of Dreams and the Cloaked Emissary. It is the Master in charge of all things drinkable, save for water. From the delightful 1868 First Sporing, to the dreadful strangling widow absinthe and the obscene bottled oblivion. It is known for its great revels, which are an absolute delight, by the way, and for its jovial, almost friendly nature, along with overseeing the pleasures of the flesh, shall we say. Ultimately, it is one of the masters you would be happy to run into. Next is Mr. Pages, the master in charge of protecting the public from dangerous literature, as well as being in charge of the trade in the written word and in writing implements themselves. Despite its censorious attitude and love of overtly verbose language, it is also one of the friendlier masters and will even allow certain concessions in its dealings, and according to some, it is an aspiring author itself, though of course you did not hear that from me. Now, on to Mr. Cups, who is also Mr. Mirrors. It is an enemy of Mr. Spices, insofar as the Masters can be enemies of one another. Mr. Cups controls the trade in sculpture, pottery, crockery, and the things fragile and fine, such as high-quality secrets. It is also in charge of the Relicas, the army of rag and bone men seen around London. As Mr. Mirrors, it seems only to trade in glass, and holds the knowledge of the dream world beyond the mirrors, parabola. Mr. Mirrors is elusive and rarely seen outside of the mirror marches, where only the mad go. Another master trading under two names is Mr. Apples, also known as Mr. Hearts, and formerly known as Mr. Barley, the Khan of Roots, and the Khan of Hearts. As Mr. Apples, it trades in wood, food, and immortality. It is known to be an avid gambler as well, having been known to gamble majestic yachts to those who want them. As Mr. Hearts, it deals in meat and bones, skins and ligaments, animals and blood. It has not been linked to any great tragedy in the city, though its mystery meat sold at the Labyrinth of Tigers has been known to make some unaccountably peckish. Now to the more aggressive masters, Mr. Fires and Mr. Iron. Mr. Fires is known to love our fair city, a trait it and I share. It is the one who controls the trade in coal, gas, and other such fuels along with candles after... 
It is, however, violently opposed to unions and workers' rights, and controls the neddy men, the brutal enforcers of the master's will. Mr. Iron controls machines, tools, weapons, and was known as the Khan of Swords and Mr. Bronze. It never speaks, but can write with both hands simultaneously, and wield weapons the same way. It may or may not oversee the game of Knife and Candle as well. I mention these masters together, as they are both two of the masters I would avoid crossing the least, if your immediate physical well-being is your priority. Mr. Vales is a relatively young master, insofar as masters can be young, and oversees the trade in silk and clothing. It holds a particular interest in the silk weavers of spite, though not in any of the district's less wholesome enterprises. I'm sure you understand. And there are whispers it carries a dark secret that haunts the skies of our fair city. Of Mr. Stones, there is little to say, other than it oversees the trade in stones, gems, salt, and blasting powder, and that it was once known as Mr. Marble and the Khan of Marble. It is also known to be materialistic and somewhat greedy, and finally is rumoured to be tired of London. Mr. Spices is irritable and cannot stand affronts to its dignity. Flaws Mr. Wines and Sinning Jenny are happy to exploit. It and Wines used to be close until they fell out over whom had domain over dreams. It controls the trade in prisoner's honey, a substance you simply must try one day. It is also the master rumour to be connected to Jack of Smiles, and those are just rumours, of course. There are two masters whose status is often called into question. Mr. Sachs and Mr. Chimes. Mr. Sachs appears in the city close to Christmas during the twelve days of Mr. Sachs, though instead of giving gifts, it takes them away. It may take your greetings, as is tradition, your dreams, or even you, if you are unlucky. Known to Zaylers as the Crimson Beast of Winter, it was once a separate master, though now its role is played by the other masters or other individuals of note. As for Mr. Chimes, all that is known is that it runs the House of Chimes, a club open only to the truly exceptional, and may have been the Khan of Drums, though it is widely speculated that Chimes is, in fact, a role shared by the other masters combined. Finally, there is the Forgotten Master, Mr. Eat. No. No, I cannot discuss it. I will not. Not now, not ever, for both our sake. You must leave. Now. Make sure you are not followed. When you arrive at your lodgings, lock the doors and windows, close the curtains, snuff out the candles. I will send word when it is safe for us to meet again, delicious friend. Now go, before it is too late.